In this video, we're going to take a look at how you extend the range of your wireless network using a TP-Link AV600 Powerline Wi-Fi kit. Powerline Communication, or PLC, simultaneously sends both data and power through the electrical wiring in your home. As Powerline Communication is an established technology, it is a cheap and simple way to extend the range of any home wireless network. However, because Powerline technology relies on your existing domestic electrical system, old electrical cables, improper wiring, and circuit breakers between connecting cables can negatively impact the performance of your Powerline network. You may have noticed that the packaging says Easy Wi-Fi Setup. This statement is made in reference to using Wi-Fi Protected Setup, or WPS. However, as we've mentioned in other videos, WPS is not secure and should not be used. So this video will show you how to configure a Powerline network without using WPS. So with all this in mind, let's take a look at the TP-Link AV600 Powerline Wi-Fi kit. The contents of this kit consists of a TL-PA4010 adapter, a TL-WPA4220 extender, two network leads, some technical support material, a quick install guide, and the details for the wireless access point name and password. The smaller of the two plugs is a TL-PA4010 adapter. It consists of three indicator lights, which are above the pairing switch. On the bottom of the unit, we have a network port to connect the adapter to your router, and on the back, we have the prongs to plug the unit into a power socket. For the tl wpa 4220 extender, the front consists of four indicator lights. On the bottom, there is a two port network hub, a pair switch, and a recessed reset switch. Again, on the back of the unit, we have three prongs to plug into a power socket. As you can see here, we have our existing wireless router connected via a network lead. to the TLPA4010 adapter which is plugged into a wall socket. There are no status lights visible, so let's turn on the unit. You can see the indicator light cycle as the extender boots up. We now need to wait around 10 to 15 seconds for the power line indicator light to go out. When the power and ethernet LEDs are both lit, you can plug in the TLWPA4220 extender. Again, we need to switch the extender on and wait for the status lights to cycle. We recommend that when you're initially pairing the adapter and the extender, you keep both of them in close proximity to each other. As the extender powers up, the Wi-Fi status light will flash rapidly to signify that it's working correctly. Because the extender and adapter are not paired, the power line indicator is not lit. In order to pair the two units together, we must first press the pair button on the adapter unit. We can then press the pair button on the extender. We now have to wait for the power line LED light on both units to light up. This will signify that an encrypted connection has been made between the two units and that we have extended our home network via the house's electrical wiring. We have also extended the range of our wireless network, but we now need to unify the wireless access point names for our router and the TP-Link power line extender. If we take a look at our wireless network, we can see the access point name My Doodad's Wi-Fi, which is being supplied by our router. But we can also see a TP-Link 21F22E. This is part of the same wireless network, but using a different SSID name and password. We need to change the SSID name and password of the TP-Link extender so that it becomes a seamless part of the My Doodad's Wi-Fi network. To do this, we need to connect to the TP-Link 21F22E wireless access point. Then we need to use the Wi-Fi card supplied in the Powerline Wi-Fi kit to enter the default password for the TP-Link extender. 
This will allow us to connect to the wireless access point created by the TP-Link extender. If we now open a web browser, in the address bar we need to enter http colon forward slash forward slash tp-link plc login dot net. When we press enter on the keyboard we're asked to enter the administrator's details to access the TLWPA4220 extender. The default username and password are both admin, all in lower case. When we log into the extender, the first thing we need to do is change the default password from admin to something a little bit more secure. To do this, we need to select System Tools from the menu. From within the System Tools menu, we then need to select Password. In both the old username field and the old password field, we need to enter admin in lower case. Then in the new username field, we need to again type admin, but in the new password field, we need to choose a more complicated password. I would suggest that you use the same password that you use to access your router settings. In the confirm new password field, retype the new password that you wish to use. Selecting save will update the extender with a new password. As the old password is no longer valid, we need to log back into the Powerline Extender unit. The easiest way to do this is to close your browser window and reopen it. Again, we need to enter http colon forward slash forward slash tplinkplclogin.net to open the login page. Type admin in the username, but now enter the new password we just set. From the menu, choose Wireless. You will see an SSID field. Change the entry in this field to match the wireless access point name that you use with your main wireless router. In this example, we will be setting the SSID to My Doodad's Wi-Fi. This matches the wireless access point's name that my computer normally works from. By changing the SSID name on the Powerline extender, Computers will seamlessly connect to whichever of the two wireless access points has the strongest signal. This allows you to move freely around but without having to manually reconnect to whichever wireless access point is closest. The other settings, channel, mode and channel width, will be leaving on their default values for now. However, you may need to tweak these settings at a later stage to improve your wireless connection. Both the Enable Wireless Powerline Extender Radio and the Enable SSID Broadcast options should remain enabled. When we select Save, we're informed that the changes to the wireless configuration will not take effect until after the extender has rebooted. As we need to make one more change, we're going to select Wireless Security from the Wireless menu. You will find options for disabling security along with WEP and WPA, WPA2 using a RADIUS server. In the WPA, PSK, WPA2, PSK section, we need to change the PSK password so that it matches the same password used by our main wireless router. Again, this will ensure that a computer can seamlessly move from one wireless access point to another without any prompting from the user. When we select save, we're informed that the changes to our wireless configuration will not take place until after the unit has rebooted. If we select the click here link, we're taken to the reboot option. We can now reboot the extender. Once the extender has rebooted, because the old wireless access point name for that extender no longer exists, your computer will revert back to the wireless access point name it normally uses, in this example, My Doodad's Wi-Fi. With the Powerline Wi-Fi extender now configured, we can place the extender in a location in the home which has either a Wi-Fi black spot or a weak wireless signal. After powering up the extender, we need to ensure that the power line LED is lit and the Wi-Fi LED is flashing. 
These two indicator lights will confirm that we have extended our wireless access point using Powerline technology. So to recap, we've paired a Powerline's adapter to a Powerline's extender. We then manually configured the extender so that it integrates its wireless access point with our existing MyDoodads wireless access point. This allowed us to extend the range of the MyDoodads wireless access point by using Powerline's technology.